anyone on earth could ever make them, Peter woke up and saw that suddenly there were two other people with Jesus. It was Moses and Elijah. Whoa! What was going on? Peter was so excited that he asked Jesus if he could make three tents. He wanted to be a good host and for each of them. And then, you're not going to believe this, a cloud came, poof, they disappeared. And God said, this is my son who I dearly love. Listen to him. Then, bam, it was all gone. And Jesus went back down the mountain with the disciples. What just happened? They were used to seeing Jesus as a regular man, but they've also seen him as God, which is very awesome. And they saw a little bit of heaven. How cool is that? Do you wish you could see God? I wish I could. Will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, there's been never anyone like you. You really are the Son of God. Only you can be a man and God at the same time. Thank you for giving us the Bible to know this, and thank you for loving us. We love you. Amen. You can go back to your seats. Thank you. be seated. Good morning. Faith Kids Music Club is going to help present our gospel reading for this morning. They have been practicing and are super excited. Our gospel reading this morning will be accented with some musical instruments. Sometimes when we listen to um, the word of the Bible, we can tend to uh, go passive, become passive listeners, uh, especially if it's a text that we've heard many times before. A way to combat that is adding visual and auditory cues to uh, add some flair to the text uh, that helps us understand it in a different way or um, hear it again. So as they set up, they'll be presenting this for us today. Our gospel this morning comes from Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. Six. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to him Elijah, with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, this is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, 
the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them all to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. You may be seated. Let's give our Kids Music Club a hand. Thank you, you guys. I'm going to petition the church council that you do that at every service now, okay? So no, that was really a great way to bring the Transfiguration Gospel to life. So well done, you guys. You guys worked hard on that. Well, dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, just about everybody has seen that some version of that classic t-shirt. So-and-so went to such and such and such a place, and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. Maybe you received one of those at some point in your life. The implication being that your friend or family member got to go and experience it all and you got a cheap t-shirt. What a letdown. And yet, I've noticed recently that there's a religious version uh, of this line of thinking. You see, we live in a world, in, in, in a, a social media world that is very strange. There's so many crazy ideas out there, and one of the preferred ways to express your crazy idea is through what is called a meme. Now, a meme is one of those, uh, for those of you that don't know, is an image or an idea, usually humorous, combined with a short statement to spread some sort of viral message online. For instance, I'd like to share with you a couple of my favorite memes that I had on my phone. So this one, this first one, I thought this was kind of funny. Oh, my dad, you know, I don't know. Um, <laughs> This next one, uh, maybe for the church worker um, uh, crowd, um, why didn't anyone tell me about this? It was in the bulletin. <laughs> Read your bulletin, people. Um, uh, how about this next one? Uh, T-Rex can't, can't reach his Bible. What's your excuse? Uh, that's a little convicting. Um, um, or uh, this one's more of a disclaimer. Jesus saying, I have nothing to do with this. Um, let's hope that's not the case today. And my all-time favorite meme, and it's Super Bowl Sunday, uh, a quote from Abraham Lincoln. Um, one of the wisest things that Abe ever said. Um, but one meme that I have seen online far too many times is this stupid claim. My God has a hammer. Your God was nailed to the cross. Okay, first of all, I mean, I know that Marvel superheroes are popular and all, but who really worships Thor? Or any of the old Norse gods, for that matter? And then to engage in what amounts to divinity trash-talking? It's like the t-shirt version of religions. They've got a powerful, hammer-wielding god of lightning, but all we've got is a puny god who died on a cross. What a letdown. If only it was transfigured, transfiguration Jesus all the time. Because the Jesus of the transfiguration gives us a Jesus that we can be proud of. I mean, look at his dazzling white clothes. The Gospel of Mark even notes that no one on earth could get them that white. So eat your heart out, OxyClean, right? And check it out. Jesus is so important and so powerful that two of the most important men to ever walk the face of the earth appear to consult with him. Moses, the great Exodus deliverer who died on Mount Nebo 
thousands of years before, and Elijah, the great and victorious prophet who was swept up into heaven on a chariot of fire. There they were, in the flesh, talking to the dazzling, white-clothed Jesus. I mean, Thor might as well take his hammer and go home, because that's what I'm talking about. That is what Peter had to be thinking. This is what I signed up for, right? This is what I dropped my fish nets for. It's about time that Jesus started flexing. And in his wondrous awe and holy fear, Peter just starts talking. Lord, this is great. I, I never want to leave this place. How about I build a few tiny homes, one for each of you? Mark notes that Peter was so terrified that he actually had no idea what he was talking about. He just knew that finally he had the Jesus that he was looking for. But then his fearful blabbering was interrupted. Because first, a cloud came out of nowhere and covered the mountaintop. It overshadowed them, not unlike the cloud that covered Mount Sinai when Moses received the law in Exodus. And I wonder if Moses on that Mount of Transfiguration wasn't like, here we go again, right? And then out of that cloud came a voice, came the voice, the same voice that thundered at Jesus' baptism and with the same message, this is my son, the beloved. And then as if directed at Peter, and let's face it, maybe also directed at us, he, the voice added, listen to him. And then suddenly, just like that, gone. No more voice, no more cloud, Moses gone, Elijah gone, no more dazzling clothes. The disciples looked up and saw only Jesus. The disciples experienced dazzling light, legendary uh, patriarchs, overshadowing clouds and the voice of God, and all they have left is only Jesus. And Jesus said, let's go home. What a letdown. Now maybe you're thinking, all right, give me a break, Pastor Dave. It's not like we worship Thor we're here in church. We're not embarrassed by our crucified Savior. After all, we have crosses in the sanctuary. We love Jesus. We love that he died for us. So what are you talking about? And of course, all of that may be true. But let me give you an example to explain what I mean. Last week, while I was at the Augustana District Theological Convocation, I received an out-of-the-blue text from one of my former youth. In the course of the text exchange, she mentioned how she had grown disconnected from her faith. And so I mentioned that since I was in the cities, we should do coffee. And so I found myself on my way home on Tuesday afternoon, at a, uh, sitting in an Eden Prairie coffee shop for three hours, reconnecting with an old friend. And in the course of our conversation, she explained that she had a friend who struggled with their faith. That friend had been abused by their father as a child. Horrific stuff. And as a result of that abuse, they questioned why a supposed good God would allow such a thing. Now that friend's life was marked by substance abuse, unapologetic womanizing and, pros and promiscuity. My friend and former youth struggled with how to answer her friend's questions about God. And I suspect she also struggled with coming to grips with those questions herself. But then again, so do many of us. Because I think that when it comes to the problem of evil, or bad things happening to people, 
We want transfiguration Jesus. We want a dazzling Jesus full of power to burst onto the scene. We want to hear the clear voice of God. We want action. We want the bad to be gone. We want to live happily. But instead, what we get is only Jesus. That's what I tried to explain to my friend. I can't tell you why these horrible things happened to her friend. I can't explain why God lets bad things happen at all. I could only tell her what God did about it. And what he did was he came into the world. He entered into our suffering world, and then he suffered. And then he died with us and for us. That's all I could give her. Only Jesus. Only Jesus and his promise of eternal life. And I don't know, maybe that's why church attendance is down in America. Maybe that's why attendance, attendance isn't what it should be here, here, here at Faith. Because while eternal life is really great and all, it seems like there are much more pressing matters at hand, like making a good living here and now, like dealing with all my baggage from my childhood, like giving my kid an opportunity to excel in athletics and academics, like just trying to catch up on sleep. Eternal life can wait. Worship can wait. After all, it's only Jesus. It seems absurd and kind of sacrilegious to say something like that, but I can't help but wonder if that is the underlying thought. And I can't help but confess that it's been in my head, and I suspect maybe it's been in yours. But here's the thing. Only Jesus is all that you need. Even when he doesn't seem to answer all those seemingly pressing matters, just try dealing with them without him. Our Lord Jesus isn't just a bringer of eternal life. He reorients our entire life. As Paul declared, in him we live and move and have our being. Think about it this way. Who can you count on to be with you even in your darkest moments? Only Jesus. In whom can you find your true identity and true belonging? Only Jesus. Who knows your deepest, darkest secrets and yet loves you all the same? Only Jesus. Who forgives you all of your sins, all of them? Only Jesus. Who died for you? who rose from the dead for you, and who is with you by his Holy Spirit? Only Jesus. On that transfiguration mount, Jesus turned on all of his glory. It was amazing. It was awesome. But on the crucifixion mount, he was in all of his glory, suffering and dying for my sins and yours. And that is the most relevant thing ever for your life. It gives us identity. It gives us purpose. And it gives us life. So they can keep their t-shirts and their hammers. All that we need is only Jesus. And you've got him. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Please rise as you are able as together we confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we continue to worship God now with our tithes and gifts and offerings. And we uh, welcome Faith Singers and the Faith Kids Music Club uh, to bring the gift of special music.
Let us bow our heads and hearts together in prayer. O oh Lord, our gracious God, how easily we, like Peter, can be dazzled by signs of glory and triumph and domination, as you revealed in the transfiguration of Jesus. So speak to us over and over, as you did on that mountain long ago, so that we might focus our eyes and our ears to Jesus only. Center our hearts and minds on the cross, where you made Jesus to become sin itself, in order to destroy its power and to free sinners from our bondage to unbelief and rebellion. Grant us abiding faith that Jesus alone is our Lord and Savior, and in Jesus only, you grant us all that we need. Lord, in your mercy. God of mercy, enfold all who are ill under your healing wings. We pray especially today for Sharon Ranke as she recovers from surgery. Sustain those who are receiving treatment or in rehabilitation. We lift up to your care everyone who is named on our prayer list and the others for whom we pray now in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, by your Holy Spirit, comfort and sustain all whose hearts are heavy with grief. Bless Ross and Stacy Urich and their family as they grieve for his father, Ernie, and Ruth Torgerson and all the family and friends of Marlon as they grieve his death. Fix their eyes on the cross and the empty tomb that they may have a holy and certain hope in the promise of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, as children from our family of faith begin their preparation to receive Holy Communion today, Open their minds and hearts to this gift of grace and the blessings that you pour out through it. Strengthen their faith along with their family's faith, and they may be anchored ever more securely in your saving promises. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord of the Church, we thank you for all the ministry team and church council members who offer their time and ability to provide leadership for our church. As new members are installed in office today, Inspire, equip, and guide them in the ways that you would lead this congregation, that all that we do may serve and please you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, as much of the nation stops today to watch the Super Bowl, grant us the perspective to see it for the fleeting entertainment that it is, and not a matter of ultimate importance. Keep our hearts fastened on your promises and our values rooted in your will to win eternal victory over sin, death, and the devil. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. All of these things, O oh Lord, the prayers that flow out of our hearts and those greater divine gifts that you, only you know that we need, we ask all in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now hear the promise of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the very night in which he was betrayed to death for our salvation, took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body and it's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again after supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it to them to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
All baptized Christians who cling to Christ's promise to be here for us with his body and blood are welcome to receive the Lord's Supper today. Children not yet communing are invited forward to receive a blessing. For those who require it, we do have gluten-free wafers or non-alcoholic wine. You can simply request those from your servant. But all is prepared. Our Lord is here, and now he invites you. Come to the Feast of Salvation.
Please rise to receive the blessings. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ in his precious blood strengthen you in true faith and preserve you unto everlasting life. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn from the Green Hymnal, number 543, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.